Three, two, one. One more time, get your eyes closed. Okay. Go ahead. All right. We good?
don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I almost never get on Facebook yeah, either. I was like, so I don't even have your number. I was like, I don't know how to get a hold of anybody. I don't know if your someone has your card. Yeah. Just going to be a Same here. He's always talking to me about it. Yeah. The last time he was just saying, I'm like, you look so good. Jesus, <laughs> looking so good. <laughs> 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 yeah. Last time I want to take this seat. Right. When I take this I last photo. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he's talking. laughs> That's what he was saying. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Matthews 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle. We got this, honey. We got this. And humble in heart. You will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. This is one of those hard times, but your word says in everything, give thanks. Yes. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, Father, we acknowledge that you know everything about us. You know our end from the beginning. And so, Father, we thank you. Even in this transition of our father, our brother, our friend, our neighbor, we thank you, Father, that you lent him to us. And we take time out today to reflect and to honor and to celebrate the life of our friend and brother, Ernest Washington. Father, we ask you to look on this family, look on the children. Father, look on the loved ones that are hurting and their hearts are broken. Father, we know your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So, Father, as we close this last chapter of the time that we can show love to Ernest, this is the final. And we thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I've been in ministry for, had to think, 40, almost 40 years. Been, most of you know me, those who are here from Washington Temple, Brooklyn, New York, and this is probably the hardest assignment I ever had. Ernest was my friend. <laughs> and he was my brother. And so, today as we each take time to reflect, there's no official program, but we're family here. And so if your name is called, you may not even know your name is going to be called. <laughs> just call, just come in love. Come in, in your trueness. Because that's who Ernest was. Ernest was the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pull no punches. No. <laughs> And he had no bridle on his mouth. No, 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 no. So might as well just go ahead and tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as a friend or brother and also a minister of the gospel, this is one of the hardest assignments. <laughs> because I was told I can't use any of those words that he would use. <laughs> so I can't quote him. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> So every time you see me make a gesture like this, that's a quote <laughs> from my brother Ernest, and uh, that's just who he was. He was a class act, and um, I tell you, he will never be forgotten uh, by me and my brother, of course, Fred, him and Fred were thick as thieves, and um, So we're going to miss her. We're going to miss her. I'm going to ask, um, I was astonished when I heard that Dr. Cynthia Penn was here, who is the daughter of uh, the late Bishop Landon E. Penn. And if anybody remembers the relationship between the Penns and the Washingtons, it is just um, be fitting that she would be here and, um, and and I feel led to just ask her to come and to do the scripture and she can do old and new as she likes and she can also have words of readings and reflections uh, of Ernest Washington for they were working 
just beginning to work on a project. And so um, I'm going to receive her at this time, Dr. Cynthia Penn. I don't know about anybody else, but in the Church of God of Christ, <laughs> <laughs> we always say, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's right. Praise the Lord who? Everybody. Everybody. Because everybody, everybody. That's right. need to praise the Lord. That's our teaching. Hallelujah. That's how we brought up. Um, I'm going to talk about my friend. Anybody else need to get the record? All right. That's why I say do it in love. What do you got to do? Okay. <laughs> um, this is not it. I'm going to go to what I have for my friends. I'm going to Proverbs. Can y'all hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to Proverbs. In the King James Version, and it reads, A man that has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that stood closer than a brother. My friend Ernest Walter Washington personifies this biblical truth, especially to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Especially to me. In the eyes of the world, friendship takes on the concept that it's about what you can do for oneself. But in the eyes of God, friendship takes on the outward focus concept. It's about friendship to others rather than people just being a friend to you. God has a specific expectation of what a friend must be willing to do for a friend. Being loyal and helpful during good times and bad. This is the kind of friendship Ernest and I have. Speaking the truth even when it hurts. Beautiful. This was the kind of friendship Ernest and I have. Beautiful. Demonstrating love. The kind in John 15, 12. That means, this is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. This was the kind of friendship Ernest and I had. Good friends are priceless and they are rare. If you have a faithful friend like Ernest and I, count it a blessing. When, it, when, we, had, when we have been friends since childhood, we've been friends since childhood, so mm -hmm. father was the late great Bishop F.D. Washington yeah. and the late Songbird of the Church of God of Christ, Madam Ernestine Washington. Yeah. I am the daughter of the late great Bishop Lanny D. Penn yeah. and Reverend Madam D. Penn of the Universal Temple Churches of God. Our parents was known as the greatest preachers in their time. Yeah. Right. Ernest was funny, and when we were together, we always had a great time. He was not concerned about being recognized about who he was. I will truly miss my friend. 50 years is a long time to have such a friend like Ernest Walter Washington in my life. Amen. 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 to the family. Beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Cynthia Penn for those kind words and reminding us the value of true friendship. And you gave us some history of Bishop Washington and Madam Washington and Bishop Penn and Madam Penn, uh, these founding fathers, the generals. They'll never be forgotten. And Ernest served them behind the scenes. Nobody knew that but he was behind the scenes, driving around, and doing stuff during the week. And so we thank God for those wonderful memories, Dr. Cynthia Penn. We honor our husband that's with her and, and his wife. We wish to raise your hand. Good to see you guys. Thank you for coming. 
Um, I got one more son here. He, his father was the late great Dr. Timothy Wright, and he, Timothy Wright, was one of the greatest sons of Bishop Washington in the gospel. And Ernest and Tim were tight, got in trouble together. <laughs> Y'all can laugh. <laughs> got out of trouble together. <laughs> and so um, Donnie, Donnie Wright is here, and he is one of the greatest drummers uh, in the, uh, the church community. And uh, if I remember now, I saw him get ordained. So I'm mean, oh, preaching the gospel. And so I am happy to uh, to hear, hear that and to see he's carrying the legacy of his dad and carrying out the gospel. So we're going to have words from um, Elder Donnie Wright as he represents the Wright family in saluting Ernest Washington. I wish my other brothers could be here, but 
they they're in uh, Jersey somewhere. So, <laughs> but thank you, and uh, I continue to pray for me, and I continue to pray for you. Amen. I watched them boys grow up. I'm very proud of them. I served his father for 11 years as the assistant pastor of White Christ Tabernacle. Uh, so I'm very proud of them. We're very well connected to both these families, the Washingtons and the Wright family. Um, but we're going to bring up someone. Um, he was one of Ernest's longtime friends. Our friendship was broken up in generation. We are my generation and my brother. We were ten years behind these guys. So these guys, we kind of looked up to. They were smooth. <laughs> they were cool. They had swagger before Obama came along. <laughs> Ernest, Johnny, uh, Ricky Goodson, yes. Terry, yes. Charles, yes. and Johnny Smith, all trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I may have missed a few names, <laughs> but we were behind them, and so we, we would look up to them, so you know there was no hope for us. <laughs> So Johnny Smith is coming here and represent the Smith family. His family was one of the founding families along with Bishop Washington back in 1953. So uh, let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen for him as he comes. Amen for him. Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! God is good. All the time. All the time, All the time God is good. Yes, he is. I'm gonna do like we used to do, giving out to God. We don't do that no more. I will give out to our Father. And I didn't even know if I was gonna be on the program. If she didn't call me, I was gonna give out to the program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I was the first born boy in Washington Temple. The first one. Nobody don't remember me. A lot of people don't remember me because I was the photographer. So mm -hmm. the people didn't see me because I was the photographer. Uh, Elder uh, <laughs> Daddy, Tim, right? Yeah. I did his mother's and father's pictures. That was my first professional job. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no film in the camera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> man, boy. Yeah, man, boy. <laughs> but I know all of this. If you remember the cross that's up there, that's yeah. my grandmother. That was for my grandmother, and people don't know, Dad Hicks. So beautiful. And when he said about turning the lights out oh, and sure. everything, I, I happen to know all, all the places was. Oh, he was, um, all right, he was there. But <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> Ernest, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but with Ernest. Frederick and I were born the same year. My sister, Deborah Smith, Evangelist Deborah Smith, they were born the same year. So we were just like that. But Ernest, when Elder says something, I can say this that my uh, pastor friend of mine named Bishop Johnny B. Young, but his favorite thing was straight talk, straight understand. Yeah. That was Ernest. Yeah. Yes. Not sometimes, <laughs> all the time. When I say oh, I have to make capital letters, A-L-L, -L. that was Ernest. Ernest did never cut no punches or nothing like that. Because if I knew he was gonna dress him in, I might have dressed up with mine just just so he could say, yeah, I got mine. A cowboy band. Band. <laughs> I was in a cowboy band, but I would have had mine yours. But everything he did, there's nothing, and he called me a week and a half. Mm. And said he wanted to talk to one of our friends that passed away with COVID. And I said, Well, Ernest, I'm down here now. We've been here. Well, Johnny, I can't say what he said. He <laughs> said that. Yeah, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> he said, We got to come see you. I'm here looking at you. Not the way I wish I wanted to, 
But we know. I can't look at the fan. Yeah. That was good. I ain't crying. <laughs> and then when I speak in my church, I'm Minister John Smith now. Thank Johnny. Go ahead, Paul. Right. And I always mm-hmm. break a tear. Because that's how good he is to us. Amen. He was that good to us. Thank you, Johnny. Minister, Minister Johnny. It's taking me a minute to get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> just to be in the presence of the family uh, during this difficult time. Um, You know, I had the pleasure of speaking with my brother late into the evening last night, 
and we were just telling all kinds of stories <laughs> about growing up on President Street for a little bit with the family and, oh, and all the ins and outs of Washington Temple yeah. and um, just, just all the things that Ernest exposed us to as young people. I was talking about riding horses yeah. and um, late night runs to Coney Island to get right. Mimi some uh, frog legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. right? <laughs> and all the things he's done. You know, and as time grew on, um, Moose kept, kept in touch with um, Uncle Ernest. And, um, you know, they had heart to heart talks. And y'all know, y'all know, wait, yeah. the gesture? <laughs> Y'all know that Ernest was what he was. Um, he wasn't perfect, um, but he loved his children, and he loved his family. Um, and so I know he rests comfortably um, in the hands of Nana and Papa, yeah. uh, Frederica, yeah. and all those that preceded him in death. I wanted just to take a few minutes just to read some of the cards that we have. We know that there are many more um, uh, wishes and um, uh, for the family and in terms of folks' condolences and sympathy. Um, this card is with sympathy. Um, it says, in this time of sadness, I hope you don't feel alone. I hope you feel the love and support of a whole circle of friends and family who will be there for you for as long as you need them to be. Love, Val, and family. And with sympathy from all of us, may it help you to know that others care for you and understand your sorrow. And this is from the Murphy School Apartments, and there's so many um, folks that um, <coughs> signed this card and just had expressions of love for the family. Praying for you, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. May God give you strength when yours is gone. May his grace and mercy carry you on. May the unending love that he has for you revive your heart and see you through. And this is also from the Murphy School Apartments. Deep inside us, God has placed a spirit that refuses to be broken and we call this hope. No matter how rough your path or how far your journey, just keep walking in the light. And remember, God's got you. And he will never let you go. The Johnson family. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I'm going to bring you greetings on behalf of all of those at Washington Temple that could not be here that may be joining us um, here today. Ernest Walter Washington was survived by his daughters, Yashika Smith of Pennsylvania, Satija Brooks and Larry of Maryland, Ernestine Washington of New Jersey, and Zaria Washington of North Carolina. His sons, Ernest Washington, or as I call him, Little Freddie, <laughs> and Trish of New York, Eric Washington of Virginia, Quentin and Brandon Washington of New Jersey, nine grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, many other loves, uncles, cousins, <laughs> and all those that loved him. Um, thank you for taking the time out to share your condolences with the family. That was beautiful, Ernestine. <laughs> I know I'm feeling old. I, uh, I see all these young people I've watched grow up. Uh, and now see them serving in the next level of capacity. Um, I want to, uh, before I ask my brother to come, there's... Um, the young lady that I met last night, who was a, a, a friend of Ernest, and I'm not sure if I got her name right, I mean, got a mother's name, Lucille. I want you to come and have just a minute or two. Now, if I pull your skirt, that means you're going too long. <laughs> All right? <laughs> And I'm seeing.
seeing faces out there, because all I'm seeing is eyes. So I'm trying, <laughs> if, I, if I'm not acknowledging you, because I'm not really, and some of y'all look familiar, but I don't really. But I'm going to catch you, because y'all look familiar. <laughs> See my eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord and good morning. Praise the Lord. Giving honor to the Spirit of Christ, who's the head of my life. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for um, the life of Ernest Washington. My name is Lucy Taylor, and I was happy to hear that I think Timothy Wright's grandson was in the house this morning, because I am the granddaughter of missionary Lucy Brown. And Timothy Wright uh, was my grandmother's son in the gospel. And she gave him one of his first buildings to have his first church. Um, when he wrote his book, Who's on the Lord's Side? My grandmother's in chapter 11. Bishop F.D. Washington was my first pastor. Uh, we joined the church when I was three years old. I was born in 1961. My first recollection of Ernest Washington when I, was when I was five years old. I had a crush on Ernest when I was five years old. And he's five years older than me. And I hadn't seen him in many years. And two years ago, exactly two years ago, Ernest re-entered into my life. And that reason was for a season and a purpose. God was the glue that brought our friendship together, and God was the glue that held our friendship together. I'm going to focus on the spiritual aspect of Ernest Washington. About last week, Ernest had a surgery on his wrist, and I prayed. I had called him in the morning, and we had prayer. Ernest used to always say to me, I'm saved by grace, and I'm under the blood of the Lamb. And before I go any further, I just want to say something to the family, to his children, all of his children, to his baby daughter, to his son, to his sister, Satija, I mean, to his daughter, Satija. I just want to say Ernest loved you so much. You were so special to him. Azaria, he loved the ground. He, she, you were your daddy's baby, and he loved you so much. He would give her anything. He would walk the sun, the moon, and the stars for his girls. And his boys too, Freddie, I call him the preppy boy. And, and, and Eric, my baby, I love Eric. So to all, to Mike, Mike, I'm Lucy, I'm Ernest's friend. And to everyone, to Freddie's wife, I just want to say that to all of his sons, the ones I don't know, I'm just mentioning the names that I'm familiar with. But even Dr. Cynthia Penn, I met her, she met me with Ernest. So I just wanted to clear that up so you, you know I'm not a complete stranger, and I'm no stranger to the Church of God in Christ or Washington Temple. So um, like I said, Ernest said, I'm saved by grace and under the blood of the Lamb. And I began to pray for him. And the Lord had me to go into tongues. My whole entire prayer was in tongues. Only one thing was said in English. I am shielding him. Ernest had a spiritual aspect to him. Those who come from Washington Temple are very familiar with Mother Elizabeth Haynes, the prophetess. Yeah. And uh, Ernest, would begin to tell me of the prophecies that Mother Haynes gave him, and I would tell him of the prophecies that she gave me when we were young. And he said, she said something special was going to happen to me. He said, I've been waiting on that special thing to happen to me. I said, Ernest, the special thing that she was talking about was the gift of the Holy Ghost, because God wants you unto himself. Praise God. And most of our relationship was based on God. If it wasn't for God in the midst of us, we wouldn't have had a relationship. Hallelujah. And I believe that 
Annas is now resting in the presence of God because the Lord gave me the scripture that everyone likes to trot out once a year for Easter. But that's not a once a year scripture. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and the two thieves, one on either side of Jesus on the cross, one thief did not have faith in believing God. And he said, if you be the Christ, save yourself and come down off of this cross. But there was another thief on the other side. And that thief indeed looked over at Jesus and said, Lord, please, when you go into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said to the thief, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. So he didn't go a long route with Jesus like the disciples did. But in that very moment of time, when he recognized and gave Jesus the glory for being Lord God and Son, that very day when he asked to be with Jesus, Jesus received him unto himself. So I believe on the day that Ernest got in the accident and during the hour that they worked on him at the hospital, I know that Ernest laid there and prayed unto God and God received him unto himself. Don't worry about Ernest. Just work to get where Ernest is. Because Ernest is resting in the arms of God. Because God said to Ernest on September the 16th, 2021 at 7.27 p.m. Enter thou into my rest.
Testing one, two.
you know, I with all these children at this spot, I think about Sharon and her boys and um, the other children, you know, um, Sididra. <laughs> When I met him, <laughs> this girl wronged me. Yeah. Asked me, how old are you? <laughs> because I heard you're about my age. <laughs> and I said, well, that's really not your business, you know. <laughs> I mean, I love your dad, you know. And, it, and he said she was going to, she's like that. <laughs> she, 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 yeah. Um, he, he's really right. got great kids. I got a chance to meet his brother Mike. Um, I must say this everyone's birthday, you remember. Tidra's mom, Connie. Oh, today's Connie's birthday. Yeah. Today's this person's birthday. Today's Tidra's birthday. Today's Eric, Freddie, Sharon. I mean, he's, he's just an amazing person, you know, and he's funny, and him and I bump heads a lot, and <laughs> I tell you what, he says a lot of things, and <laughs> 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 And you can't be around him and not be happy. To know Ernest, you're either going to love him or you're going to hate him. Yeah, right. He's 100% real. He's got a big heart, you know, and he goes everywhere and he smiles and everybody knows him. Everyone loves him. Yeah. Um, I know we're all going to miss him, but he's not the one that wants people to cry because he's, so, he's such a happy soul, you know. No, I know he's in heaven. I know that. But, you know, you know, I told myself, I said, God's got to have a sense of humor because he asks us to do one thing and we do the other. He asks us to laugh when somebody dies and we cry. And he asks us to cry when somebody's, um, laugh when somebody's born. Right. You know, cry when somebody's born. We do the total opposite. But that's why God gives us time. And we all got to learn to get along. And try not to be mad at each other, even though it's hard. And forgiveness is a big thing. Amen. And we need to find it in our heart to forgive each other. Yeah. Yeah. And not look back at the things that people do and yes. say, do not say bad things, because the Bible says, he without sin cast the first stone. Oh, yeah. We're not perfect, we, but we try. And I know he loves his kids. And I know it may have not been different, not for everyone. But he loves you all, and I want you guys to know that. Okay, and we just know that he's in heaven and he's happy, you know, and we miss him, but he lived a good life. He told me that. Yeah. He said to live, you got to die. I hated him saying that, but he died doing something that he liked. We may not, I hate that very motorcycle, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he lived yeah. doing what he liked. And I'm he just going to say this. Yeah. Um, I loved him. I know he was with Sharon for years. He talked about her. Mm -hmm. And he talked about a friend that he told me about. You know, I, I know his heart. I know everything he does. <laughs> and, I, and I think she came up here and said something. Yeah. And um, he's got good people that really loves him. And I really want to say thank you guys for really coming out and show all this love to him. Because He's not crying, he's smiling. Mm -hmm. I mean, no more pain, no more hurt, no more worries. He, he doesn't even have to wear a bloody mask anymore. That <laughs> <laughs> is home free. There's no better place than heaven. If we knew what heaven looked like, we would want to get there before God is ready for us. Right. It's beyond our comprehension, and he's gone there. And if he went there and he had a chance to come back and he saw heaven and all his family, he chose heaven. And I think that's what he did. Thanks. So I'm trying to take my bloody phone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
eulogy of my friend. Uh, but I want to ask Sharon, you know, you want to say anything? It would only be right. I'm just finished. Nineties kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, man, it comes from the heart. Yeah. And I know these going to come from the heart. <sighs> <I'm> just, <laughs> it's a couple of fun things I want to say for a minute, but um, I was just telling Sharon this. I said uh, we used to go to uh, Coney Island a lot um, and get in that little beige car he had. Park Avenue. <laughs> And he go up and then we said, come on, y'all, me, Freddie, Eric, Sharon, we get that car and we go eat the frog legs and the french fries with cheese on it and the Nathan Franks and all the other things. We went there quite often. It was like a, a treat because I, I practically almost stayed at the mansion on President Street. I felt like I was a part, I was at the mansion early, now I'm telling you. They told me what our mansion was really like. Hallelujah. For real, they was living that. That's right. And they wasn't pretending. Um, I remember so many times, you know, um, Freddie and um, Freddie Coppermore and Ernie used to be, you know, they the jokesters of, you know, of the America. <laughs> <laughs> and they used to joke Amen. on everybody and anybody. Everybody. It didn't really matter who you were. No. If you saw, people used to duck them. <laughs> So they could not say nothing, and me and Freddie kind of picked that up a little bit. I mean, Freddie was joking on people the same way. So it, it was, it was, it was fun, man. It was good to always talk to him. I talked to him. And he always joked, but I, I thank God for him, though, and I thank God for being a part of that whole family, yeah. the Washington family. It blessed me. I mean, my father, yeah. man, he, he Bishop Washington. They was, they was close, man. They used to be like, you going to, to UNAC. UNAC. That's it. <laughs> we used to go to UNAC together, and me and Freddie be clowning, acting up at UNAC. Yes, Lord. Breaking right. stuff and throwing stuff over the balcony. Oh, <laughs> Throwing ice at people. Jesus. Jesus. 
I'm, I'm gonna end up there. Oh God, good. we will have some fun. For real, right, Fred? I'm telling you, that's why I love Freddy, man. I don't care what you say. And he followed that same pattern after his father, and it was Washington. Amen. So I just want to thank God that we can laugh too, you know? Yeah. Laugh at things. Laughing is medicine for the soul. Right, but it's also you still cry too. Yes. Because when you bottle stuff up, it just begins to fester. Yeah. And you don't want to go into a, a, a spirit of depression because you helped it. My pastor told me this, and I'm going to sit down. He said, what is it to be strong? By not crying, is that strong? Or by crying, it makes you strong as well because you got it out. So today, I didn't cry yet because I try to remember all the great things in Ernest. And I do. But I still love him, Frederica, man. They have they, they brought me in as family. When I tell you family, Uncle X, I don't want to go too far. But I just want to say, God bless the Washington family. I love Eric. I love Ernest Freddie Washington. Yeah. That Ern, Eric used to tell Mimi on us yeah. <laughs> because we used to mess with him so much and joke on him so much. Yeah. Mimi said, I'm going to tell your father on you. But I thank God for y'all and I'm just glad to be here. Glad to be here. You don't understand. All the people I saw, Ernestine and Renee and everybody here, I felt like I was in Washington, Texas. Man, I was going to get an a offering plate and start talking to the parents. <laughs> but I swear to say, God bless you. I'm telling you, you, you got to know this is occasion. We all got together because this is a, a, a sad occasion, but it's also a celebration of life. So I like to laugh too, as well. Again, I love you all, Quentin. And, uh, Brandon and, and all everyone, but Fred, man, I love you, man. <laughs> I haven't seen you in years, though. But I have genuine love for you. You and you know you're in my heart, man. And your father's in my heart. Awesome. Amen. Don't y'all feel the love? Mm, it feels nice, nice and warm. It feels good. Uh, Ernest is approving. Trust me, he is approved of what we have done and said today. Um, uh, one of the hardest thing I have to do is bring my brother up because my brother and Ernest, they were ride or die. They were biggest thieves. Boy, <laughs> Ernest will get on Fred nerve, <laughs> but let me get in the middle. Fred, but play with Ernest, boy. He loved Ernest. And um, he's going to share one or two stories. And um, we're going to see if we can change his tears to laughter as he starts thinking about the good times that we shared. That's my brother, Freddy. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> 
We went to the Chiefs, the Mavericks, the Jaguars for different reasons. <laughs> we invented some words together. <laughs> but then I learned something. You know, we grew up in a time when men weren't strong. Um, me and my brother, we didn't have a father. And so we had to look at those guys, the bad boys. The bad boys. <laughs> so there's a Greek term called acting in local parentis. And what that breakdown was is that you had other men that played father roles to you. Uh, we had the Robert Taylors, yeah. Yeah. the Rufus Bronsons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had Uncle Leroy. Yeah. 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 Right. I had Ernest Washington. <laughs> I don't know how I made it. Freeze! <laughs> when I heard the uh, daughter of Wendy Penn uh, talk earlier, and she was mentioning everything, and no one touched on to Jesus loves me, you're a crusade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's why we missed that up. We went there for different reasons. <laughs> 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 we watched that Park Avenue all day. Getting it ready. Getting it ready. <laughs> we put in earth, went in fire. <laughs> We'd have the Crusaders playing street life. <laughs> when I heard Darius singing my way, I was thinking of Ernest singing street life. <laughs> High pitch voice, falsetto. Oh, oh, yeah. He would do it, you know. Uh, there's so many things to say. I loved Ernest. We had this thing, and I'll finish with that. I'll finish with that. But the 70s, um, my mom, um, I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old, and I started hanging out playing basketball at 13, 28, and many would take us and make us run to the store, could drink us and make us go to White Castle, <laughs> and I actually um, didn't mind doing it because I was going to learn how to drive that day too. <laughs> you know, we used to do little things, and you know, you get sneaky, right? You know, so y'all grandfather uh, would be at the church in the office all day. <laughs> and I would go back, and I was probably about 13, no driver's license. And I would go, and I would go, Bishop, did you want your car wash today? And he would not even look up and just throw me his car keys. And I'd drive all day long. <laughs> Bring it back on E, bring it back dirty. <laughs> then I'd call Ernest and we'd laugh about it. And, and that's the way we, we grew. Uh, I'm going to touch back because she's the oldest member in my life, in my memory, and that was Sharon. Sharon didn't like me. <laughs> At first, I grew to love you. She grew to love me. I just I gave that plausible pause for her to fix it. <laughs> Ernest loved her, and being that he loved her, that took away from my time. I'm going to explain what the all right means. <laughs> However, as I grew, and as Sharon grew to love me, we grew up together and we had little trips to the Poconos on the weekends until me and Ernest destroyed the house up there and that ended that. <laughs> you know? But uh, Quentin and Brandon, you had a great father. Uh, the issue, uh, some issues, certain black men, we didn't have fathers. And sometimes um, we don't have the direction. Ernest had a father, but his father was in soul business. Right. right. Yeah. He was running. That's right. He, was in soul he, he ran, and therefore some of us raised ourselves. Me and my brother, thank God we had each other. So we were able to become stronger. Uh, from that, now I could go back before Sharon because there was Judy. 
And how many times did I end up on Bourbon Street sitting in the car? <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> I could go a little further because when I was sitting in the car waiting, I would look at Valerie and go, wow, she's beautiful. And Ernest would say, stay away. <laughs> Probably the only person he said, stay away from. <laughs> So then as we got older and we matured and we got a little further, then he met Kim. Oh, he told me about Kim and you know, I was like, who? And then when I heard her talk, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Kim didn't like me. Say it. I love you. He used to tell me all the time, and Ernest is Kim, beat him, Kim, beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Right. And, if, in our relationship, we really, really enjoyed each other. I learned everything from Ernest. Yeah. Everything. And there were certain things that undeniably were crazy. <laughs> Ernest said to me one day, um, we were in the car and he was doing his thing, old, old thing, old thing. And he turned around and looked at me and he said, Fred, that never ever use drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I never have. Never. What did I think? But then he would come get me and take me to the sophisticated gents. And we drink all night. <laughs> <laughs> My mom didn't care as long as I was with Ernest. That's right. That's right. My mom loved Ernest. She called him Papa. And as long as I was with Ernest, I could come in at 5 o'clock in the morning That's right. at 13. Oh, that's right. Sometimes he had to carry me in. <laughs> Got it. Got it. It had to be at church at 11 o'clock. <laughs> I didn't like Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about the dogs, right? Yeah. Okay. So those were trained attack dogs because we had some burglaries, right? So the Doberman's name was Wendy. Mm -hmm. And yes, Wendy did stay in every room in the church. So I learned every room in the church. <laughs> <laughs> some of y'all get that. <laughs> <laughs> but as I met the children and grew up with the children, I became Uncle Fred. And sometimes I've fallen away from being an uncle. I've made mistakes. And um, the wonderful part about that and making those mistakes, you can also heal right. those mistakes. I love the fact that me and Cathedral could get on the phone and talk for hours and holler and laugh and scream and I end up telling him, nope, he's going to stay on time out. <laughs> so me and Ernest had a game that we would play, and the game was simple. We'd get mad at each other because eventually every Robin wants to be Batman. And as I got older, I wanted to be Batman. I wanted him to be Robin. <laughs>
My mom said on in closing on her deathbed, it was yep. myself, yep. it was my brother, mm -hmm. and of course it was Irma in the room. And my mom was talking on a higher level that you know how you think your mom knows everything and she's smart, but then you realize she's that much smarter. Mm -hmm. And when she came around the room and was giving us the road, the road map and the path, she looked at, at, at me and she said, Fred, I want you to always take care of Iris. And God knows I tried. Yeah. <laughs> I tried because he's, he's my main man. Yeah. And, I, and I'll always, always, always love him. And I'll always remember all the things you know, uh, that made me and us bond. My first motorcycle. My first car. A part of every part of me. My first business. Always a part of me, right? And I appreciate that. And I love him for it. Take every little nugget that you shared with him and push it down real, real tight and hold on to it and realize that Ernest was here for a reason. And God knows I'm gonna mess up. Thank you, I appreciate you guys. tell you, anybody in the church world could be standing here ministering this last remark for Ernest Washington. Al Shopton was on standby. He could have been easily standing here today talking about his friend, Ernest Washington. Ernest came from a very rich family, not just rich in money, but rich in good friendships. And Bishop Washington often had some of the greatest leaders of our time come to our church. Yeah. And one of them was Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Came through our church and sat and talked. And, um, and Bishop had relations, that's the kind of man he was. And then uh, Madam Ernestine Washington um, had friends like Mahalia Jackson. And so, just to tell you the type of level far as who could have been standing here, uh, Frederica, uh, his sister who he blew up, God, he loved Frederica. Frederica, man, she was the governing force. If anybody can get Ernest on track, <laughs> it was Frederica. And and that's why I said teacher and handle and everything, because we always called her 
She's like the second auntie. She's, <laughs> she controls all of us. <laughs> and we love her. Right. And, um, but Frederica had friends like Natalie Cole. There was nothing for Natalie Cole to be at the house. 1370, 1328. The house address, let's say, that. Somebody said mansion, that was some mansion. And um, and to see the greats come through that home. So Ernest had exposure to some powerful people. And, and, and so anybody could be standing here. But when I got the assignment uh, from Satidra, I said, wow, I said, Satidra, you're asking me to say goodbye to my brother. And emotionally, I had to get my head together all week long because Ernest was my brother. And so, in closing, of course, I got to give you a scripture, and I'm going to tell you one story. One of my most famous stories with Ernest was we were riding horses together, and we were on a trail ride. And we wore, we drove, we um, rode quarter horses, which is a little bouncy ride. And we were just ripping and running. And I think the Loach was there. I know probably Otis was down there. Um, Gooch and my brother Fred. And we were riding, riding, riding. And in our ridings, we kept um, some cold. <laughs> But lights in our horses' bags. And man, those beers were cold. And they were so cold, Ernest used to always say, Yo, man, give me a mitten, because my hands are getting frostbitten. <laughs> <laughs> We were riding that day, and this guy come flying past us, and he went to stop. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> Go ahead. Straight talk. The man was an amputee, and his leg fell off while we were riding. Well. We had some cold mittens. <laughs> and, and here I go. Leg down. Leg down. <laughs> the guy with the leg started laughing. Because <laughs> he knew he was an empty team. He didn't know. The man leg fell off. Ernest, you know, Ernest looks for an opportunity. <laughs> Ernest is laughing, he gets the shoulders. <laughs> He's laughing so hard, his shoulders are going. We were out of control laughing. And he started singing. And his song was, um, All right, somebody gonna be crying. Too much laughing. <laughs> I was still screaming, let it go! Let it go! <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> yeah. We had some good times, boy. Some good times. I remember on the 9 11 weekend, before I moved down to North Carolina, um, I had a very high stress job in New York and my brother had moved to North Carolina and gotten big into horses. He had horses everywhere. And, and of course, where Freddie was, there was Ernest. And where Ernest was, there was Freddie. And those two up down here in North Carolina, and I'm up in New York, and they're riding horses during the day. Mm -hmm. And they got those cold, Bud lights. And then they'll call me. I'm in my hustle and grind. 
I'm trying to get it done. And here come my brother and Ernest calling me, and all you hear them in the background is that can. <laughs> They're calling me, cracking open those Bud Lights. And I'm in the office, sweating, <laughs> making decisions. And that was right after 9-11, Thanksgiving of that same year. I said, Fred, come get me. I had enough. Uh -huh. I'm sick of y'all drinking them beers by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I came down to North Carolina, met the Loach, met Otis and all the fellas, Gooch, and I got me a mitten. <laughs> <laughs> and I joined in, in the horse riding business. Ernest was an amazing personality. In our last years, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Ernest was having some heart issues and he needed a pacemaker. Fred was in the hospital having all kind of issues. Most of them connected to diabetes. And we're, the three of us are sitting down laughing and talking. Of course we were eating, drinking beers, <laughs> laughing, talking about how getting old sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were falling apart. Ten years ago, the doctor said I had 30 days to live. I go to chemotherapy on Monday. But God is still yeah. keeping me. Yes, yes, yes. Ernest was right there, came out of one surgery one time, and we were in the hospital. <laughs> Ernest and Fred. I'm in the hospital recovering, ICU, all kind of stuff going on in my face. Everything is messed up. And hit them two sitting on the side of the bed, and all I feel is them laughing. <laughs> Want me to pull your plug? <laughs> Did you blink? Did you blink? <laughs> Did you, blink? <laughs> you feel this? <laughs> I don't know why they didn't throw them out. <laughs> We laughed, they hollered right there in the hospital room. I said, good God, my friends like that, but you don't need enemies. <laughs> they were good, 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 good boys. I'm going to miss Ernest. The down south cowboys used to laugh at us, calling us concrete cowboys. We coming from New York, ain't no grass in New York. <laughs> <laughs> there was one field right there by the airport and all the horses had to eat in that one field. <laughs> oh, ain't no grass. But we loved horses. And uh, when we came down here, we thought we were doing something that we met Otis and them. And man, they taught us and we would go cow trail ride with thousands of cowboys. There's nothing beautiful to see thousands of black men and women riding horses. And it was just a beautiful culture. And he loved it. And, and we just had good friendships because of that. I'm just going to miss him. His laughter, his candor, his mouth. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> like, Ernest, 
Sunday morning, they had to close off the streets on both sides, Bedford and Rogers Avenue, Amen. and direct the traffic to go back up around Bedford Avenue, Burger Amen. Street. Amen. That was on Sunday morning. Yeah. You That's couldn't right. get in there. The balconies were full. Yeah. Because the people wanted to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. They wanted to hear Tap Pastor Timothy Wright on that organ. Yeah. They wanted to hear Madam Washington sing. Yeah. Madam Graham sing. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, we have a rich heritage. Your father, Minister Armstrong, I remember him when he first got ordained. This, this, this is a rich heritage. Yeah. Don't let it drop. Don't let it drop. There's greatness in you. Yeah. There's greatness in you, Quentin. Yeah. Greatness in you, Brandon. Yeah. There's greatness in Fred. There's some work, more work to do. We see it. <laughs> we see it. Man, we got babies. She's 13. Yeah. Dude, we got to get locked and loaded. Yeah. <laughs> we got to protect her. 13 year old, beautiful girl. Yeah, the other kids are grown, but we still need to affirm them to let them know they are loved and that they are somebody. Amen. You are somebody. Flap your wings as far as you can go. Let your body just soar in the spirit of God and watch you accomplish those things that may seem impossible. But the reason you can do it is because it's in your blood. It's in your DNA. Yeah. That greatness shall come to pass. I thank God for all the mothers. I thank God for all the, the children, even the ones that are not here. I know um, uh, Robin, uh, Williams, uh, 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 Michelle, uh, Bird, uh, Ashika, they're not here. Eric isn't here but we still love them. Mm -hmm. And we'll never stop loving them. Mm -hmm. And we gotta keep on loving them until they come into the full understanding that we had an angel. He didn't talk. You know, we think they're supposed to be, woo. No, he was an angel. He may have been broken. He may have made some mistakes and came short. But look in the mirror. You broke him. Amen. And you come short. Amen. That's right. That's right. And so you give mercy Amen. and grace. Amen. And as it comes down to where my man is going, get out of God's business. Amen. God sent him on an assignment and now God takes him back. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for each of you that came today to celebrate the life of Ernest. I love someone put a name Walter. <laughs> she went all the way back. That's his godfather name. Walter Ernest. Walter Ernest Walter Washington. And um, man, he's going to be missed. And so we celebrate him when we thank each of you for coming. If I did not call your name, please don't feel slighted. Um, we love you. Um, is there anyone else that needs to say something? I thought so. Come here up, my sister. I want you to, uh, you knew I was, you've been pulling on me all service. <laughs> I am. Um want to give my finger just for the family. I've known Ernest since I was about 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had surgery, so I'm living a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not going to say a lot, but Ernest was my friend. I was, uh, had moved down here about 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was going to work, work at UPS and some little cars rolled past me, and I heard the name Yvonne. Oh, my name is Yvonne Blaze Walters, Hyphen Walters. And uh, I just waved, I thought it was one of the drivers from the building. So I waved and kept walking. I saw the car make a U turn and came around. He said, Yvonne. And I bent down 
and I thought I almost died. I was gonna die. I said, Ernest, what the? <laughs> <laughs> that was close. That, that, that was close. Did, did you get your way? And he said, what the? <laughs> I said, I live here. And he said, he lived here. I'm shaking. I'm so nervous. I, I was, I, I didn't know what to say because I just, I just can't even believe that. You know, yesterday I came in and I was talking to him, and I said, Ernest, stop playing around. <laughs> Wake up and stop playing. This is what I was telling him yesterday because my heart, I can't. You know, we, 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 it, it was like, when I saw him, I'm going from place to place because I'm all over the place. When I saw him that day, how many, 20 something years ago now, it was like I saw my brother. I'm from Carroll Street, Brooklyn. Oh, okay. That was a nice And uh, around the corner. right around the corner, oh, yeah. President Street, Carroll Street, Union Street, yeah, right. Brooklyn yeah. Avenue, York right, yeah. Avenue, yeah. Kingston. We, you know, we all grew up together. Ernest used to be afraid to come to my house because I had a big German Shepherd. And we always knew when Ernest, I ain't coming in, he yeah. used to tell me. We'd have to lock him up. But Ernest is my brother, and uh, just the other day I spoke to him and he was telling, asking my husband and I, when y'all going to do a barbecue? You know, he loved potato salad. Yeah. And he, he tasted our potato salad. He said, y'all need to y'all need to sell that stuff. So anytime he would come to our barbecue, oh, it was, he, he, he loved it. You got something to come? No. <laughs> I wish you would let me know. <laughs> you know, but um, I, I wanted to say something. I, I didn't know what to say because my heart is it's broken. I'm going to miss him. We talked and laughed a lot. He was supposed to call me when he did the surgery the other day. He called my husband and I, and he told me, I'm going to ride the motorcycle from the hospital. And I was like, Ernest, please call us. Let us pick you up, you know? But um, I just wanted to say hello. And um, if you ever need me, any oh, of you, I've I held you when you were a baby. Um, your sister doesn't remember. And she, she doesn't remember wow. me, but she was a little baby. And I, I haven't seen you since you were little. But I love all of you, and um, I'm going to miss him. He's still here. I, I'm trying not to look at his picture, because every time I look at his picture, I want to cry. You know, because I just can't believe it. But I love all of you. If you ever need me, don't hesitate to call me. Kim? I know you know about me, right? <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet you, and I love all of you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to call her and get some potato salad. <laughs>
Excellent. Thank you. God bless you. Now, praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, we are closing. I'm going to ask the funeral directors to come. And um, I have agreed to do the final committal here. And, um, our, did you guys request a final viewer? No. Um, she, she said she wants to see one else. All right, they're going to allow us. She said she wants to see one else. We appreciate all of you. We thank you. If anyone lives in the Raleigh area and you need services, man, please reach out to Lead Funeral Home Service. The staff is amazing with their level of professionalism from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. Um, you can't ask for better quality service here in the Raleigh area. So, um, we thank you.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend your servant, Ernest Walter Washington, as our bodies come from the dust of the ground, we return the dust of the body to our loved one, back to you, Ernest Walter Washington. We take the dirt from ashes to ashes, from dust to dust. We present Ernest back unto the Father. And we say, well done. Amen. Thou good and faithful servant. And we shall see you again. And there'll be no more crying. Be no more dying. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all the reflections, all the words of love to support this family, to support his friends, those who have traveled far and near, give them traveling mercies back home. Father, again, thank you for lending us this angel, Ernest Washington who has completed his assignment. We thank you for undergirding this family, these children. Strengthen them, Father, for the journey. We bless you and give your name all praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I appreciate your words on today's homegoing celebration. Um, everybody that has traveled near and far, then wants to say thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind actions and words of encouragement for them during their time of need. They truly appreciate it. And family, thank you for entrusting your family with our family at Leaf Center Home. Uh, we hope we're rendered to service to your satisfaction. Uh, immediately following the service today, we're going to have a balloon release. Uh, so the family is going to ask that uh, you meet them directly outside the double doors. Uh, we'll have a balloon release following this. Pastor, we'll follow you out. Oh, right. Let's walk it, family. Let's walk it. Walk it. Three miles. Let's walk it. <laughs> 